Greetings YouTube performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view and today I have a Sanitaire though this one's a Sanitaire Electrolux it could also be a Eureka Whirlwind uh, or it could be a Bissell product uh, since Bissell now owns Sanitaire and they've been making this machine almost 20 years so this is really um I don't wouldn't say last gen technology I would say like 10 generations ago technology and that has its plus and cons, and I'm going to explain that in this video. Uh, first off, this is the bagless version of the machine. There is a bagged version of the machine, uh, which, spoiler alert, is probably better in just about every way. So let's go through what's on the machine right here. So it has a nice long stretch hose here, six-foot stretch hose. Comes with, you know, upholstery, dusting brush, crevice tool, uh, all that sort of thing has a manual height adjustment, so that's good if you have deep pile or soft pile carpet. Uh, you have a sealed HEPA system, which isn't as common as you, it should be these days. This is really one of the first sealed HEPA bagless units. Um, so the HEPA filters right here, and you need to change these HEPA filters about every three to six months uh, with normal use. Now the, the filter in the dust cup you notice this is not a dual cyclonic dust cup. You notice the dust cup is empty for the start of this and the filter is clean. So this will reference later in the video as we pick up, we'll test the suction. One thing I do like is if you forget to put the filter in for some reason, there's a spring-loaded tab and what that does is keep you from putting the dust cup on without the filter. Um, you know, some companies have done that in the past and then removed it because uh, it does save the vacuum. So that's a really good feature. We see a lot of people not put their filters or bags back and ruin their vacuums. You have a small pre-motor filter right here as well. That's really in case for some reason this gets compromised or you somehow empty the dust cup where you shouldn't. So that just all clicks back. Uh, your on-off switch is here, which is a cost-saving thing, having it not on the handle. This machine, you notice it's marked low to high pile carpet. Originally, they marketed these uh, for hard floor. And of course, having a brush roller on on hard floor is a no-no. So not for hard floor. This is a carpet uh, machine only. Now, on the back of the machine, there is a nice carrying handle. The machine, in terms of it lying flat, it does have a pickup if you're doing an area rug. And it doesn't lie quite all the way flat, but it lies flatter than a lot of other bagless machines. So that is a plus. We do have our high quality studio microphone attached right now, so you are gonna hear the real sound of the machine. We're gonna test the working vacuum here and see what it is from start. And at the end of video, we're gonna test it again to see if it's lost any suction. <laughs> So we have about 36 inches of working vacuum there uh, and almost 60 sealed. It's like 59, 58 on there. So we're going to do some pickup tests now and get on with the review. And at the end of the review, again, we're going to go uh, the results of this. Wow. Um, that is about five feet into my bedroom all the way down the hall. There's the dog. And you can see the cord's plugged in. So cord length is excellent on this machine. Well, welcome to In The Shop. One thing I want to mention about this vacuum is it does take a rubber belt that needs to be replaced probably about every one to six months, depending on use. Uh, the brush roller is wooden with sealed ball bearings, which is good. And it's easy to get to. The cover only has three screws. But again, most modern vacuums have gotten rid of rubber stretch belts. Uh, the other thing I really like about this machine uh, is everything else is easy to get to. There's no circuit board. There's just a switch, a wire, a motor. So very simple to repair and keep going. Though the plastic quality of material could be better. Um, a lot of the material is real flimsy and doesn't hold up too well over time. So projected lifespan is definitely under 10 years. I wanted to point out... Uh, this is really a great thing because this is probably the greatest curve in the machine. 
and it's clear and it just snaps in and out of here. So if something were to get stuck in here, you'd be able to visually see it. The bad thing about it being clear is stuff does build up on here and this will have to be cleaned occasionally. That just snaps on right there. You'll have to excuse the wind noise, it's a windy day. Now there's no uh, full bin indication on this machine, uh, but typically when they get about half full is when you want to change them. And with this one, you have to undo it, pull the filter out, which has all sorts of nasty shit in it. Empty that out. It's a top empty. You can see all the dust going everywhere. You would never do this inside. And then you can see what's in here. And I'm not exactly sure how, unless you had another vacuum uh, or compressed air, you're supposed to clean this. And that's why you should change these. Uh, on a regular basis. You can see all the dust that built up there as well. It's a real hassle. And then that happens. There's just so much dust. It's just not coming out of here. You'll have to rinse it out or something. All right, we've got our usual mess. And for those of you who are new to the channel, this is breakfast cereal, cat litter, flour, and fresh dog hair. Now, spoiler alert, this machine is rated very highly by CRI and I'll put a link to that somewhere on there. So let's give it a try. All right, let's see what she's picked up. No, no breakfast cereal, no cat litter. No flour. No embedded dog hair over here, but you see that it left this big chunk behind. And one of the things on this machine that this is illustrates, so the pickup test did really well except for this chunk, and I'll tell you why. If you look at this machine, the suction tube is off to one side. And a lot of machines, what they ended up doing was moving the tube in the middle or closer to the middle. This was before they started doing that. So what that means is the right side cleans better than the left side. And this isn't unusual for machines from this period. But again, this is a machine they're still selling today. So this isn't something we usually see, but here it's illustrated. So I've decided to put a whole bunch of pet hair out here. You guys will get to see what the results are. And you can see that after you vacuum like you normally would, that really doesn't become an issue because you go over the same spot once or twice, but it is something to be mindful of your edge cleaning. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but the vacuum lines this machine makes are very pleasing. So let's talk about maneuverability a little bit on this machine. See it's starting to get full here and we just did one room and a pickup test with it so you would have to constantly empty this as far as maneuverability goes it's average there's you know it's not overly heavy it's not overly light it's just average let's talk about stair cleaning maneuverability this is an upright if you have a bunch of stairs this is not the vacuum for you clearly it's an upright vacuum but if you do have to carry it up and down stairs it has a carrying handle here it's about 15, 16 pounds. It's not particularly light. It does balance our right on the stairs. So that's something I'll give it a, a go for. The nice long hose and cord are a plus as well. And so it's low. Depending on your variant, uh, you're either going to have 
be just two wands or you'll have a crevice tool that fits inside a wand or you'll have a small crevice tool like I have with this one. Again, it depends on the exact variant. They've changed it a little bit. Um, your upholstery tool is very basic, nothing special on that. So let's give this a go. I do want to quickly mention when you are using this on stairs or carpet, the carpet head, the cleaner head does lift off. So it's not going to sit there and run on your carpet, which is nice because there's no actual mechanical shut off on this machine. Well, as you can see, it's not going to fit under a bed, but the front of the nozzle will fit under some things. So that might be all right for certain types of cleaning, but not all. There's also no light on this model. Previous models of this with Eureka would actually have a light. All right, in conclusion, who is this vacuum for? Um, that's kind of my question. In, with the additional maintenance of a belt change, it being bagless, the extra hassle, again, you can buy the bagged version for less money than the bagless right now. So again, that could change any time, but that doesn't help the case for bagless. So really, who is this machine for? Uh, at this point in time in 2020 the only, only thing i can think of is this is for somebody who has to have a bagless vacuum uh, in a commercial environment which requires it to be quiet it requires it to be up to osha standards and it requires there not to be a large amount of dust emissions which we know this machine has pretty decent filtration for a bagless so of course that's all wrecked as soon as you open the bagless cup um, so again, if, if there was an application where you would need a bagless machine uh, the, in commercial, a commercial environment, this might be for you. Now, if you own a house and you have a bunch of dogs, obviously this machine is not for you. If you do decide to buy this machine, I'll put a link below to some extra filters. They've been on the market long enough that they're very inexpensive. I highly recommend you buy Genuine or at least go with a high quality aftermarket replacement like EnviroCare. I would not go with uh, just any old filter off Amazon. I would always keep a spare and I would expect to blow off and rinse the, the vacuum after every use. The dust cup got fairly full just doing one room. So again, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why you would want a bagless machine, but here it is. Moment of truth here. We're gonna test the working vacuum. The working vacuum was about 30, 31, and a uh, sealed vacuum went, went down to about 55. So again, it does lose its suction power, only proving that you want to change the filter on a regular basis. Well, folks, thanks for watching my sanitaire review. If you're interested in other commercial vacuum reviews, I'm going to link those right here. I've reviewed quite a few different commercial machines. Um, if for some reason this is a machine you want, check in the description box. I'll have the machine and extra filters. Please consider a subscription. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you really like what we're doing, check out our Patreon page. Not sure how you're supposed to clean this out. you need a leaf blower with this vacuum too.